Hi, and welcome to the 13th installment of Learn Your Color Computer. In this installment, I'm going to show you how to save and load programs that you've written yourself, and how to run and load store-bought programs as well. First thing we're going to show you is how to save and load programs you've written yourself to cassette tape. Saving to cassette is no problem, really. Place the tape that you want to save your program to in the, into the recorder and press the play and record buttons. Now you'll use the csave command like this. It's used starting with the command name csave and or the one to eight character file name enclosed in quotes following it such as file name. There's one other small function hidden in the csave command, and that's the ASCII switch. The ASCII switch is used to save your program in ASCII format. This is highly desirable when you want to read your program like it was a text file. To use it, add a simple comma A the end of the program's name. Now, to show how it works, let's type a, a short, simple, one-line program like 10 rem. No more than a line number and a rem should be necessary. Now, C save the program like this. C save quote, file name, quote, comma, A, followed by pressing enter. You may leave off the comma A if you wish. You'll see the spindles of the recorder turn for a moment, then stop. At this point, you've just saved your homemade program to tape. If you're the owner of a disk system, you can use a variation on the csave command to save your homemade program onto disk. Instead of csave, simply use save. Here's how. Save, quote, file name, quote, comma, A. You'll see the disk drive come on a moment. The drive will make some sounds, and then the access light goes off. Now your homemade program is saved to disk. Again, this ASCII switch with comma A is optional. Not all programs are written in BASIC, however. Most of the better programs are written in assembly language and are saved in machine code format. To save a machine code program, you must first know three things. First, you must know at what address in memory the program starts at. Second, you must know what address in memory the program ends at. And last, you must know what address in memory the program executes or starts running at. When you know these three things, you know enough to save a machine code program to tape or disk. To save it to tape, put the tape you want to save the program on into the recorder and press the play and record buttons. Now you'll use the csavem command like this. First, we start with the command name, csavem, and a one to eight character file name enclosed in quotes as follows. The file name is followed by three pieces of data each separated by a comma. The first piece of that is the program's starting address. The second is the program's ending address. And the third is the program's execution address. Assuming all machine code program is residing in memory, we can now save it to tape. Since we have no time to teach you assembly language in this installment, we'll fake out the computer and tell it there's a program starting at address 16383. So we'll put comma 16, 
3383 and ending at address 16400 with comma 16400 and with an execution of address of 16386. So we add comma 16386. Now press enter. And once again, the recorder spindles turn and then stop. It has just saved our little fake program onto tape. As with saving the basic program, the machine code program can also be saved to disk with a slight modification to the command's name. Once again, we'll use our fake machine code program and type savem, quote, file name, quote, comma, 16383, comma, 16400, comma, 16386 followed by pressing enter. The disk drive comes on a moment, makes a little noise, then stops just like before. You have just saved a machine code program to disk. This is all fine and good for saving programs on disk and tape, but what would you do to load them back in? This is where the C load, load, C load M, and load M commands come in handy. Let's look at C-Load first. It's used solely for loading a basic program from tape into memory. Rewind your cassette tape and press the play button. You're now ready to use the clode command. It's used with a file name and closed in quotes following the command name and we'll load our small basic program called file name to demonstrate how this works. So type this in. We'll do this with the cload command, which is followed by a quote and a file name. Quote. Notice that when you press enter, Everything starts, and you have a letter S in the top left corner of your screen. This means it's searching for the requested program. Now, it should soon change to a letter F, and the file name should follow it. When the program is in memory, and the recorder's spindle stop turning, you would get your OK prompt back, and you have your little program back in. As you probably guessed, there's also a similar command to load a machine code program from tape. And you're right. It's the cloadm command. And aside from the command name, it's used in the exact same way as the cload command. Type cloadm. Quote file name, quote, and press enter. The recorder's spindles turn again. We get our little letter F. And when the program comes into memory, the spindles stop again. The program is ready to be executed. There's an interesting thing that happens when loading tape programs. When the program you're searching for is not on the first one on the tape, the names of the preceding programs will also appear as they pass by. You'll notice, however, that the search does not become a found until the actual program that you lowered is found. All the rest is passed. Of course, since you were able to save basic and machine code programs to disk, there must be a way to load them back in. There is the load and load M commands. These two commands work in exactly the same manner as the C load and C load M commands. Try using them like this. We type load 
quote file name quote and press enter the disk drive comes on once again and does its little job now you're loading your small basic program from disk back into memory and to prove it let's list it there it is now this command for loading machine code from disk is once again similar to the regular load command for loading a basic program from disk with the exception of that one letter M now to prove this let's type load M quote file name quote and press enter this drive comes on again and then stops and now your fake machine code program that we created earlier is now back in memory. Now let's take a look at how we make these programs run. We've seen in many previous shows how the run command makes the basic program execute. But how do you make a machine code program execute? We use the exec command. Normally when you load a machine code program into memory it will have the same execute address as when it was saved. For example, our fake machine code program was having an execution address of 16386. If we wanted to make it execute starting address 16384, we would simply add that address following the command name like this. We'd use exec 16384 our original execute address here we're specifying though if we wanted to let sleeping dogs lie and let it execute starting at its original execute address we would just type exec now let's take a look at another special hidden command it's inside of disk basic 1.1 and later. It's the DOS command. Some store-bought programs have a special program placed on track 34 of the disk, which is used solely for the purpose of loading and running the program. The DOS command loads that program and executes it all by itself. Let's take a look at how we would work that command. Place a DOS disk, or what, or what we would call uh, a, a disk that is DOS command compatible into disk drive number zero and type this DOS and press enter the disk drive comes on for a few moments and loads the DOS track and executes the program and finds there usually this will cause it to load another program usually the main program and executes that if you have the older version of disk basic which is without the DOS command, you're still looking good. Because with just about every program that will DOS up, there's a loader program that comes with it, which will simulate the DOS command. In 90% of all cases, the file name is nothing more than an asterisk character. So, first let's get out of this program we've gotten into. And we type load m asterisk quote colon exec. Drive comes on again. And things come into play as before. In the other 10% of all cases, the file name remains the same, but the format has changed. It can be a program written in BASIC, which simulates the DOS command. In such a case, load and run it, just like any other program written in BASIC. Now, while we're in, in disk, 
let's take a look at some of the other nice programs we have available for DISC. First, we'll take a look at a personal productivity program. Type DOS with that disk in the drive. And, as you may have guessed by now, this program was written under the OS 9 operating system, which we'll cover a lot later, but we will cover it. It quickly loads in. And it's in. Now the first thing it asks for is the date and the time. Let's just pull a date out the air. 9-19-89. And for a time, we'll say 2018, I mean 2-19 anyway, uh, p.m. Okay, now we're here in our main menu. Notice we have a little arrow here, which we can move around with the joystick. This program will either use a joystick, a mouse, or you can use the keyboard. Now, first let's go over and look at the calendar. Press the button twice to execute the program in the square. And here we are in the calendar. We can use the text editor to put in things like a reminder. Press break to get out of that. Enough of that. Let's go up to file, close this program without save to get us back to our main menu. Now, once we're back in our main menu, let's take a look at other programs we have. So, so we'll look at paint. Put the arrow over it, click the joystick, and the box moves over to it. We can then click the joystick button twice to execute the program in question. Now that we're in this paint section, we can go over to Tool, which will let us select which kind of tool we'll be using, such as pencil, erase, rubber stamp, squares, or lettering. See, so we can use inverted for lettering. Or, we can use standard for lettering. Now, let's take a look at our tools we have, other than the lettering. For instance, pencil. We can use that to draw nice little things on the screen. Doesn't have to be anything fancy, of course. Just uh, make sure that it all works. We can even go into edit and look at our patterns. See here, we can change a pattern if we want to. Now we can, can also get information on what the different tools are and what they're for. Now, we'll go to File and close it once again without save so we can get back to our main menu. That's enough for this program. Let's close it off and go back down to basic where we can get our next program. The next program we'll take a look at 
is a music editing program. So we put that disk in the drive. And we call a directory so we can find out what the name is. In this case, we'll load M, M-U-S-B-O-X. Then execute it. And in this program, what we can do is drop notes any place the cursor is sitting. Just by pressing enter, every time we move the cursor, we can put all the notes we want, really. I'll use numbers. That'll let you change the different types of notes to use. Now, if we would press a question mark, we get a command summary and what each of the commands are for each key. It's a pretty nice function, but for now, we'll not actually use it. What we'll do is we'll go to basic and reset. Now what we'll do is we'll take a look at a drawing editor program. Notice we have looked at a drawing editor already, but that was a minimal one, which was incorporated into a larger program. This one is strictly for drawing pictures, such as Program loads. Now watch this trick. This program auto-executes. A lot of programs are like that. OK, let's bypass our color scheme just to get into the main stuff. And we'll take a look at drawing boxes first. Press the button, move it over a little, we have a box. And another one, and another one, and another one, and another. Press M, and we're back to our menu. Now we can draw circles in there as well, like so, and like so, and like so. Press M, and we're back to our menu. Now we can paint in these areas that we've created with a pattern of our choice. So let's take a, a white pattern like so and fill it in on there. Press M and we're out of it again. Now on this one, we can actually copy a section of our picture that we've created into another area. Now if we view that, we can see we actually do have a small overlay, which we can then copy over into any section of the picture that we want. And we view it, and there it is. Now, let's take a look at some of the pictures that were previously created while using this program. We insert a picture disk into drive number zero. And we move our joystick arrow up to load, drive zero. And we have many choices. Uh, let's take a look at island first. A nice picture indeed. And it can be edited very easily. We can go into the micro section, which allows us to pick a particular spot. And let us change things that are in it. Like so, dot by dot. Or add dots that we like. Now we'll exit that. 
Notice we do have that little square that we just created. Okay, so let's go back to load. Drive zero. And let's make another choice from our great big list of pictures. Uh, let's say we could use something like a fairy. Not found. Let's take another look at that. Did we have the name correct? Yeah, okay. This time it found it. And we can edit it just like the other one. So, let's take a, a look at one last picture before we get out of this. Uh, let's take a look at the castle. which was recently drawn. Must have not typed it incorrect. Let's try again. And there it is. In all its glories. Now if we wanted to add things to this, such as circles, we can do that as well. And until we actually save this to disk, all of this is just in memory. So no permanent changes can be made until disk has been saved to. Well, let's get out of this. By now you should have acquired a good working knowledge of how the basic programming language works and how you can use it to write programs that best suit your personal needs in computer-aided productivity and having fun as well. And you can also accomplish large and small work tasks. And best of all, we've also shown you just how to use pre-programmed software with the computer so that it really doesn't even have to be completely necessary to know programming to put your computer to work. That's about all the time we have left for this, for this time. Next time, we'll start you out on extended color basic. See you then.